Hi, I'm Casey from Retroactive Arcade, and I'm here to talk to you about joysticks. Basics 101. I'm not going to be able to cover absolutely every joystick. Obviously, there's so many uh, all available nowadays for arcade joysticks. Um, but I will just go over the basics of the ones that I have in front of me and then kind of give you insight on how they work overall. So if you have any general questions or specific questions about specific joysticks that aren't in here, you can feel free to ask them. I might not be able to answer them 100%. I might have to do some research on it or look into it or that type of thing to make sure that I know what you're looking at for me to answer, but feel free to ask anyway. Uh, we love the uh, we love the questions because uh, we love to help. Anyway, so joysticks 101 what's good what's bad i will give you my biased opinion why not we're on video it's all good times keep it there it's all good times um suzo hap il is pretty much what we use on most of our machines uh there's a lot of different reasons for that it's not just a you know specific one thing or another that i'm biased towards those at all we will use pretty much anything that's on the table here uh there's a few things that i would stay away from so i'm going to get start with those so this is an analog joystick Okay, uh, it is IL. It's probably one of the best kind of fighting competition type of joysticks that you can get. Second best would be the Sousa one. Uh, um, they're almost identical in many different ways. Uh, but the reason why these ones are analog is just because you hit your direct connect with your actuator to your switch. These ones would be digital. They have a PCB in them, that type of a thing. So. With it being analog, it is like old school. These are the same type of joysticks that you would have got in the old Street Fighter slash Mortal Kombat, that type of thing for your old school machines. Those ones there, the only difference between that and this here now in a sense is that they had gold leaf switches on them. They worked a little differently and all that fun stuff, but the design of this was to keep it as close to the original type of design as possible, but by upgrading it into this type of micro switch so you get a lot more cycles. So this is designed for like 10 million cycles, okay? So this should last you technically forever, but um, the only thing that you'll ever wear out on this thing is one of these micro switches, really. Um, it'd be very, I've, I've seen thousands of these and I've seen like a spring break once or the snap ring on the bottom will break and you have to replace that, but it's pretty minor stuff. Now, these aren't super expensive, even though they're on the better end of quality and stuff like that. I think they might be like 21 bucks American, that type of thing. So it's not that bad uh, by any means to replace them. Uh, the worst thing that will happen to these is they'll just get full of dirt and all your body fun stuff because you're hammering on it all the time. Um, we don't sell technically any IL stuff. Once in a while, we'll bring it in and we'll do it and that type of thing. Uh, it's just because it's not that much better of a product versus the Suzo. The only thing that's different on the Suzo half versus the IL, you can see the design, obviously I don't have the stick in this one, but with this design, it's pretty much identical. They come from the same place. Suzo, Suzo buys all the parts for all these joysticks from IL anyway, but then they take them in pieces and they put them together themselves. As you can see on this one here, it used to be something that was a drastic difference. IL used to use cherry micro switches and then Suzo used to just use like generic kind of buttons or, or micro switches using zippies and that type of thing. They've changed and they've gone to cherries as well. So they're almost identical that way. The only difference is the actuator itself. So this one's made out of nylon, which keeps it a little bit quieter. And the Suzo half one just has a molded black plastic one. One doesn't really last longer than another. It changes the, the, the sound of your actual movement on your stick. So it keeps it quite quiet. This one will be a little bit louder, right? That's pretty much one of the only differences. Inside, you also have a nylon insert there. All those things keep it a little bit quieter for movement and motion, where Suzo just gives you the molded plastic generic stuff that'll fit in there that lasts forever too, but it just it's a sound barrier. Um, also, IL will give you a colored dust plate that's color coded to the joystick that you buy. So it looks a little fancier and stuff like that versus Suso, which is black all across the board for all colors. Okay, but the quality, in a sense, is all still there. Those are the specific differences. So if you're really picky about that, sound is an issue for you. Obviously, you're going to want to go to something like IL, but you're not you're not chintzing out, I guess, in a sense. You're not missing out on anything if you go with a Suso half joystick. Um, that's pretty much all I really have to say about those ones. These are analog versus digital. We're going to keep going with the analog ones. 
This one specifically here, this is a funky little one. I'm not going to get into the functions of these too much because I can talk forever about that. And there's so many other joysticks that aren't on the table that I can't talk to you about. But this one here is a super four to eight way joystick. So what this does is this has a setting on the actual shaft of the joystick. So wherever you put your snap ring when you're putting this together and it's going through here, wherever you put that snap ring, the spring inside of here will push this actuator up or down and it'll bring it to a section where within within this casing that will allow it to be either eight way or four way so based off of where it's going up or down in here that's where you get your eight or four way so you can kind of change it fairly quickly i guess at times you can just take the snap ring off push it down put the snap ring back on and then you're good to go it's still kind of cumbersome you do you it's a good you kind of just choose whatever you want with this one whether you go eight way or four way and just kind of leave it set it forget it um, it's an okay bat top joystick. It's quality. It's, it's not the best one that Suzo puts out if I, if I have to give my opinion on it, but it is still good quality and they still put the cherry micro switches on it. So you know that they're confident in that product to do that. Um, it just has those like other actuating switches on them that just, I, I'm not a fan of these ones because they have the long lever on them. Uh, I'd rather use the plastic one on here for that for the actuator instead of actually trying to touch the metal on that to give it an extra contact point I guess in the end all right so this one here is a Suzo house joystick it's made exactly like this um, competition half one and the IL uh, it's a little bit of a different mold but the idea is identical and they've just set it up so that you can just run four to eight way on here or sorry four way not four to eight way it's only four way on here um, that's kind of fun it's nice you can see the way they molded it on the inside here there's kind of like a little bubble to go each direction that gives it that extra little whatever so when you try to go in and on an angle it forces you into one of those loops so you're going up down left right only you can't go the other direction all right so that's kind of the way these things work for analog and then when you get into your um, lower end stuff like your zippies when you get into these LED type joysticks these are over, made overseas um, there's not a lot of quality that goes into this for quality control I don't really want to put it out there like that but it's yeah just never have a lot of luck with these ones lasting very long they look kind of cool and it's a cool way that they kind of made it do what they made it do but uh, the longevity of that and the utility of moving that joystick it just doesn't last very long same with these uh, zippy joysticks you can find uh, it, there's a very specific use to these ones when you're when you're using them with the metal um, like for metal tops and stuff like that so you have smaller screws it has a lower profile obviously than, than this bottom right here so it'll give you a lot of extra space so there's a lot of reasons why you'll go with something like this versus um, a higher end joystick um, but the cost difference is nominal I think it's like 10 bucks so would you rather have the creme de la creme and for an extra 10 bucks or are you trying to save that 20 bucks to get by on whatever that's up to you you do you like I've said in the past this one allows you to do um, uh, eight way four way and two way that two way is directional so it's going to go long wise with that direction so you would have to turn it up and down if you want that just to be up and down for your joystick or you're going to have to turn it that way to go left and right if you get my drift um, this one is kind of cool because it allows you to have the two-way Suzu does make this four-way in just a two-way as well so you can kind of change it up but the only difference with that obviously is that it does not universal in a sense like this so you can change it up if on the on the fly or whenever you want to something else so that you can utilize this whatever once you kind of commit to these ones you're kind of stuck with them all right, so we are going to move on to the PCB ones. So I'm going to start off with the lower end ones like this. I can already see the pins are already bent on this and it's straight out of the box brand new. So that's always fun. Anyway, so the way this works is um, it's got a PCB board on the bottom. You've got your little pin out on, the, on, on there for your Molex connector, which is the same kind of setup and pin out as your JLF. Um, so it works kind of the same way. I wouldn't bet my life on the fact that the pinout is exactly the same on these by any means. So when in there, yellow might not be yellow with blue and green and all that fun stuff. So um, it might not be up, down, left, right is kind of what I'm getting at. 
Uh, they usually take five volt unless they're setting at, they actually would have it on here. If it was 12 volt, it would say that right on the PCB. These are running five volt. Um, China doesn't have a standard basically on whether it's red or yellow or whatever, meaning five volts or 12 volts. So you really got to watch when you buy it. Uh, it should say that in the description and you should know that. So it shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but with this here, this also gives you that adapter on the bottom. So you can do four way or eight way or two. Uh, I don't think you can do two way. It's just four way or eight way on this one. Uh, but what happens is this gives a nice little glow. This is set up as a red, so you can't change it to RGB, that type of a thing. So it is limited to the color that you buy. So it'll be green, blue, red, that type of thing, white, that type of whatever. Some of them are white and it'll kind of do a flicker change, but you can't choose the color that you want to work with. It just kind of goes through a gamut on its own. All right, so these ones here, as groovy as they may look from afar, once you start playing with them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about and you probably will have to replace them at some point in time, where these ones you probably will not. Uh, you probably even get lucky with the zippy and you won't have to replace anything on that, but you can tell the difference in the feel from the quality from one to the next. Uh, this one also uses some very generic uh, micro switches in here that make it very loud. Um, so if, uh, if you're not into the loud or resistance or feeling that click when you go, um, then these ones are gonna be a little bit better. Now. If you want to get into competition stuff and really smooth action, that type of thing, we save the best for last that I have on the table. There are better ones like Sunetsu's and things like that. But these ones are probably one of the most popular mid to higher grade joystick, which is the JLF. Okay, so this JLF, you can also get it in a silent JLF. So it gets rid of that click. This one sounds a little bit louder, but once you mount it and it's all in there, it's actually quieter than most of these ones uh, for some reason. But when you get the silent one, you can barely hear it at all. Uh, it comes with a five pin out Molex connector as well. Uh, these are quick connect leads. You'll get these in the um, your little fight sticks and uh, little controllers and stuff. They should have uh, one of these connections in it already so that you can swap out from one of their joysticks like a Hori or something like that into a uh, JLF or whatever. So they make them a little bit universal in that sense. Now, most people don't usually put these in their arcade machines. Um, one, because they are a little bit more costly. Two, is that they're about being precise with finesse, not necessarily being robust to beat on. You don't want to put these on there if you have a bunch of five, five to 10 year olds or 14 year olds in the house beating on these joysticks. This thing can't really handle that that much. There's way too many little parts in there for that. So you want to you want to take it easy, play nice with this one. This is way more for competition, and it gives you that uh, quick, quick, quick response. Okay. So with that, the reason why is because you're getting a PCB on here, and that PCB is basically making a digital uh, connection from here to through your micro switch to there, and then shooting out real fast. So you're getting a really good fast response time instead of this analog where it goes from here to there to there to there to there. So you're making all these different connections which slow it down over time. Um, some of that stuff is uh, pretty nominal. You might not necessarily even notice it. If you're playing arcade games like Mortal Kombat or whatever from old school stuff, like original Street Fighter and stuff, you'll never know the difference. If you're playing new Street Fighter and stuff through PS5 or something like that, um, you can definitely make little sticks with these to make them work and you'll notice the difference and that's what you're gonna wanna have. So. That's the difference between these things and the quality of them. There's a huge difference in price point all the way across the board on them. Um, I'm sure you're gonna be happy with most stuff that you're gonna get. Zippy's probably one of the lowest grade on the table versus this um, LED one. It's pretty much a generic name completely. There's nothing really, there, there's no interchangeable parts. Once something goes on that, you're pretty much done. You gotta turf it, buy a new one. Um, all of these except for the molded joysticks themselves, are interchangeable with the toppers that you see in front of me. So these ones, when you get into the overseas stuff, um, then you're going to get into the being able to interchange your parts. So the only one that they have in, around here usually is this one for your ball topper. It's got a Loctite grip on there. You're gonna have to put in a vise, crack it, and then you can put any one of these on there because it is the same universal size for your thread uh, into the ball toppers or bat tops and then you can change the size because the size on this one here is a 43 millimeter it's pretty crazy i got big hands and this just feels weird and big for me um, we usually take them off and swap them out to the 39s or the 35s yeah
Anyways, <laughs> uh, you can interchange them all from uh, different Sanwa toppers and stuff too. There's not much of a difference in quality other than what you're looking for is dye lot. And if you can see it with this clear one here, this is a very generic one. You can see the line through the center there. This one here, you can kind of see the line. It's where the way they mold it and then glue it back together and stuff versus having something with this, like it's like more of a Sanwa one. So what will happen is, is that it has the same dye lot as the colors of the buttons and things like that. So they pay attention to that, which, you know, obviously in the end gives it a little bit of a higher quality and a consistency. And then it costs you a little bit more for that too. So now you're spending five, six, seven bucks a button, and then you're paying five, six, seven bucks for a topper that's going to match that same color. So that's the reason why there's a cost difference on those versus something like this. That's like a dollar, dollar fifty or fifty cents or whatever for some clearance items and whatever, some weird stuff. It just kind of is what it is. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, concerns, anything I missed, anything you want me to elaborate on, anything specific, feel free to contact us or just write below in the comments. And uh, you can feel free to email us or contact us on the website at retroactivearcade.ca. Thanks for watching.